So I'm making this video to discuss the basics about drafting claims in particular reference to chemical type of inventions. How do you go about drafting claims for chemical type of inventions? So let me just begin this video with a disclaimer that chemistry or pharmaceuticals is not my core competency, but the basics about claim drafting remain the same. So I'll be taking example of the patent agent examination of 2022 paper 2 question 8, which relates to a chemical type of invention. So this is the question given in the examination and this relates to a composition that is used for the treatment of rheumatic or traumatic pain and for treating the inflammation of joints, muscles, tendons and ligaments. So the first step while attempting the question would be to mark the various sections and you need to identify what does the question provide. So where is the prior art beginning? Where is the detail of the invention in the question? You need to identify all those parts. Also, you need to identify what is the technical challenge that is required to be overcome and which would help you to identify what is the need of the invention. So, this is what I have done. I have marked the different aspects given in the question paper. So, as you can make out, I have marked the prior arts which define what is the existing state of the art. So, it would define what is already known in the prior art. It provides that diclofenac is an anti-inflammatory drug. It also provides that theocolchicoside is known for being a muscle relaxant, it is anti-inflammatory, analgesic as well as an anesthetic. Then some prior arts have been discussed which define what are the problems in these components and in the last few lines you will see that what has been discussed is the technical challenges that are required to be overcome and thus it defines what is the need for the present invention. Thereafter you will see that the question defines what the present invention provides. So I have marked it very specifically so as to enable you to understand from where does the invention start. The hint is that it would provide you the solution for the problems that have been discussed earlier. So, it provides you that there are different components that have been added. So, diclofenac is one. The other one is theocolchicoside. Apart from that, they have also added another component which is butyl hydroxy anisole, which is BHA. And they have also specified why this particular component BHA has been added because it solves the technical problem of instability of liquid formulations, which means this is an essential element. Why this is important, I'll tell you in a short while. Thereafter, you will see they have defined some optional features or maybe some additional features that could be added to this basic composition so as to provide some added benefits. So, you could identify these additions with the help of words such as optionally, can also contain, so, this means that these are additional components and not the essential components. For a chemical composition, what is important is in what ratios or in what proportions are the different components that have been added. So, in the last few, few lines, you will see that they have provided the relative compositions of the different ingredients, which is diclofenac, theocolchicoside, as well as BHA. Finally, in the last few lines, they have provided a preferred embodiment, which I have marked in red. So, this is one of the most preferred embodiment of the invention. So, now this would give you a brief idea about how you need to identify the different aspects given in the question paper. You need to identify the prior art, you need to identify what is the need of the invention and then you also need to identify what is your invention. So, you need to mark the different aspects, you need to identify the essential ingredients of the chemical composition which you need to include in your claims. So, I'll just briefly discuss what are the claim drafting best practices. So, there is an independent claim which would specifically for a chemical type of invention consist of a composition and or a process which is used for making that particular composition. So, the independent claim needs to define the essential and unique ingredients in case it is a composition and the essential and unique steps in case we are talking about a process. So, what you need to define in the independent claim is the basic composition of ingredients or the most essential composition of ingredients which is used to achieve the intended goal of the invention without which the invention cannot operate. Then you have one or more dependent claims wherein you define any additional or optional components or steps or maybe you could further define the components or steps that have been provided in the independent claim. For example, in case you may have specified a particular ingredient in the independent claim, then in the dependent claim, you could define that that particular ingredient could be one of A, B or C. Let us now
now come to the parts of the claim. The most important part of the claim is the preamble which defines what the invention relates to. So, here you are defining whether the invention is a composition, whether it is a process and for what purpose that composition or process is being used. Then there is a transitional linking element. Here, as a basic rule, you just use comprising. Then comes the body wherein you define the composition or unique steps which you are defining as the unique aspect of your invention. Now, some tips to solve the question paper is that you pick most of the language from the description of the invention that has been given in the question paper. You need not create your own language just to save time. Then don't use words like can, may or could because these type of words point towards any ambiguity or uncertainty. So, you have to have specific or definitive language and thus you should use is, are, being when defining what the composition includes. You should take care of proper antecedent basis for the elements in the claim or the different components that you are using. Any component which is being defined for the first time should be defined using a or an and when you are defining it subsequently, you could use the. Finally, you could use wherein so as to highlight what are the unique aspects that you want to point towards or maybe if you want to further define a particular component or step. So, we will see how to use wherein in the claims. So, I have drafted few claims to answer the question. The question required you to make only two claims, but I have made eight claims so as to enable you to understand what is the type of claim structure that you need to bring in. You could use one or more claims out of out of the given options. You could have your own different structure of claims. This is one of the way of doing it. So, if you remember, I had talked about the essential aspects of or the essential components of the composition. So, what I have done is I have included only those essential ingredients of the composition in the independent claim. So, now you can see I have made an independent claim. It talks about a composition for treatment of rheumatic or traumatic pain and inflammation. So, this forms the preamble of the claim and it defines what you are talking about. So, you are talking about a composition and what for it is being used. Thereafter, we have a transitional linking element which is comprising. So, we say the composition comprising and thereafter, I have defined the essential elements without which the composition cannot work. And I have derived all these elements and the language from the question paper itself. I haven't framed it in my own language. So, as per the question paper, the essential elements are sodium salt of diclofenac in a particular composition range. Then there is theocolchicoside and also DHA. So, the question paper also says that there is an excipient which could be optionally added. So, now you have the option of adding that particular element here in the independent claim by specifying optionally or you could make a separate dependent claim for this particular excipient. So, now I have kept both the options for you to select which one you want. You could mention the excipient with the word optionally in the independent claim itself. The second option is I have added a dependent claim, claim 3, which talks about the excipient. So, if you are including the excipient in the dependent claim, then the statement with optionally won't be there in the independent claim. Then, if you remember, in the question paper, there is a mention about the preferred embodiment. So, the preferred embodiment has a specific composition defined for this particular composition. So, now I have made a dependent claim for that preferred embodiment. The independent claim defines the basic essential composition which is required for treatment of rheumatic or traumatic pain. But the dependent claim 2 talks about a very specific composition of this composition that has been defined in the independent claim with, with specific proportions. So, now the dependent claim further qualifies the composition of independent claim by providing specific proportions in which the different components have been added. Claim 3, as I said, you may have a dependent claim for def defining the excipient. I have made a further dependent claim 4, which further defines what the excipient could be. So, it says that the excipient could be one of mannitol and sorbitol. So, if you would remember, I talked about how to use wherein. So, here you are using wherein to further define the excipient. In claim 5, it is a dependent claim. I have defined what are the different additional aspects which could be added to the composition and this is provided again in the question. It says that it could have one or more of a solubilizing agent, chelating agents, buffer agents and pH correctors. In claim 6, which is made dependent on claim 5, I have further defined what all these agents could be. Again, here I have used wherein so as to further define all these agents that I have defined in claim 5. Claim 7 is a dependent claim which talks about another additional ingredient 
contained which could be added to the composition and it, it could be a local anesthetic. Claim 8 is a dependent claim on claim 7 and it further defines what the local anesthetic could be. So, this is how you go about drafting claims. I know this is very brief but I think this would help you frame a structure of drafting a claim. You need to have an at least one independent claim which defines the essential elements of the composition or maybe the essential steps of a process and then in dependent claims you further define all those different elements that you have defined in the independent claim. Also in case there are some preferred embodiments you could further define the composition further elaborate it in the dependent claim in view of that preferred embodiment as I have done in claim 2. I hope this would have provided you some clarity regarding drafting claims for chemical type of inventions. In case you have further questions or have any concerns, please drop them in the comments box and I will be happy to answer those.